All right. We're live, guys. Uh, good afternoon. Good morning. Good night. Whatever time it is, right? Uh, welcome to yet another installment of MSP Webinars. I am Steve Taylor, your host. Today, I'm joined by Ian Alexander. Uh, Ian, welcome. Thank you for being on today. Hey, uh, Ian, Ian is with Synchro, and Ian is also with Repair Tech Solutions. Uh, and so that's two shopper. different companies. Oh, so you are also part of Repair Shopper now. It's all one thing. I can explain okay. the origin story of that if it, if it clears that up. We're, we're going to have a, a nice conversation about kind of the, the history of, of Synchro and, and, its, and its other companies. And we're going to talk about any questions that you guys have. And we're, we're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. What, whatever, if, if it's a legitimate question and you're not just being jerks and trolling us, okay? We will, we will make sure your question gets asked. So um, <laughs> one, one guy wants to know where your office is located. I think he's making sure you're not like in your mom's basement. Yeah. Um, my office is located in West Sacramento. I have a Regis little office. Our whole team is completely remote. So we're all over California and Washington state and then some other uh, random places. Um, and so I'm in West Sacramento, but we have people all over the place. That's awesome. And I, and I tease you about the, the mom's mom's basement, but you know, my son has a dinosaur poster. Um, well, I love dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to pretend I don't love dinosaurs. I do. I'm actually reading Jurassic park right now. That's awesome, man. It happens to be that I'm doing that. <laughs> all right. So, so Ian, um, let's let's talk about Synchro. So Synchro is, uh, I want to say you, you're what, two years old now? Almost two years, yeah. So before Synchro, there were there were two different companies that I'm aware of. There was Repair Tech Solutions and Repair Shopper. That's correct. Yes. So talk to me about you know what what on earth happened that made you and Troy from Repair Shopper sit down and say, hey. Let's do something crazy. Like what? How yeah, did that even so begin? That's a fun story and kind of convoluted. So it, it give me like a couple minutes to explain it. So sure. I uh, used to, I grew up in Berkeley, California. I used to work when I was in college. I went to Cal Poly for computer engineering. I used to work at an MSP when I was in college. Um, I had been fixing computers my whole life and everything. Um, and then when I went back to college, I was like, yeah, this is pretty easy. So I like started fixing computers out of my room and all of that, that turned into computer pair business and eventually sold that. Um, then that whole time I was like studying computer engineering. I saw on my way to class one time, a flyer on the wall uh, that said, submit your idea, win $15,000 free pizza. And I had a, a notebook kind of like this um, in my back pocket with a bunch of ideas. And one of them was to automate the computer repair process. So I had been like fixing a bunch of computers and been super frustrated, like running all these different tools like Mauerbytes and CCleaner and all these different things, you know, clicking next, finish, remove on every single one. Um, and I counted one time and I, it took 887 clicks on average to repair a computer. So I wanted, you know, I had programming experience. I wanted to like automate that. And so I submitted the idea for what became later Tech USB. Um, which is a part of Tech Suite, our first product at Repair Tech. Um, and so, anyway, we ended up winning that competition. That was kind of where we got some seed money. I found some friends that were really good, actually, much better than me at software development. Um, we started Repair Tech. A year later, we launched Tech Suite commercially, um, started selling it to computer repair shops. Um, and then a customer of ours had an idea for like a widget we could install on a machine that would allow people to request service. And we were like, well, that's a super cool idea, but it has nothing to do with TechSuite. So that ended up becoming like a side project that we worked on. Um, at the time it was a side project and then it became an actual product in Kabuto. Um, throughout that whole time, we had like integrations with different people. And our very first integration we ever made was with Repair Shopper. Um, and Robert and Troy at Repair Shopper just seemed like cool people. Their team was cool. They knew what they were doing. Like we do all these integrations with people and like from a dev perspective, they were really fun to work with. Um, there was not a lot of like corporate 
stuff and I don't know, it was just easy. Um, and so we were each other's first integration, I think. And uh, over the years, they grew and we grew. And I would check in with them like once a month and like we just have a call for fun and, and chat about how stuff's going. And eventually we were kind of like, well, we have two really complimentary things and like Kabuto and Repair Shopper and the way the industry is going. Um, you know, people are basically combining these solutions, right? Like ConnectWise buys lab tech, Kaseya buys, what was it, Vorex. Um, and like there's all these things happening where you essentially RMMs yep. and PSAs are combining. Um, so it was kind of like, eventually we're going to have to build each other's thing or we're going to compete or something. So, um, we were like, look, we like each other. Like, let's explore a deeper partnership. And that turned into a merger eventually, um, which we announced like six months later. Um, Synchro was the first thing that we jointly built. Um, so the thing that we saw was that to truly solve the like issue people were having where they were like integrating two different things, a PSA and an RMM, like that wasn't the right way. And we wanted to build something that was combined from the ground up. Um, and so I think like with Kabuto, for example, like the plan originally was to basically create an RMM, um, like a full fledged, super powerful RMM. But we realized like, that's not actually like going to solve the real problem. We're just going to be another, RMM, like anything else, right? That's standalone. And the real thing is to combine them. And there's so much power there. Um, and we're starting to like really see that with Synchro and that's been super fun. So, so you brought up Kabuto. Um, what, what's going on with Kabuto? Are, are you still doing it? I mean, is, is this still an active product? Um, I think it's, we totally fix stuff all the time. Um, we make minor tweaks here and there. It shares the same windows agent as synchro. So the windows agent constantly has changes made. We don't release the release notes for that much because it's kind of like minor stability stuff all the time. Um, lots of speed improvements and things like that. So the agent gets changed all the time. We did recently make a bunch of updates to the online dashboard for a bunch of the bugs people were complaining about. Um, so we do still maintain it. But I think that Kabuto as an RMM will stay as like a residential, easy to use, simple RMM. Um, if you want something more powerful, Synchro is that and more. And oh, that makes we have sense. an easy migration path from Kabuto to Synchro where it's like super easy. You can switch, move up. Um, frankly, for most people that are paying, like if you have a lot of endpoints on Kabuto, most people save money when they switch to Synchro. Because a lot of the people using Kabuto are also using Repair Shopper. So they're paying for two things when then they only have to pay for one with an easy migration path. Um, so yes, Kabuto is still maintained. Um, and it's probably not going to dramatically change. Um, Synchro so is really the more powerful have... like upgrade path. So so you really don't have like... Um a roadmap for Kabuto. Like, and I don't mean... I, I understand, you know, you want to have that thing be like the residential... RMM tool for, for the guys that are probably doing mostly uh, break fix and just residential support services. But at the same time, you, you know, don't, don't those guys still need some new things here and there? Um, yeah. Um, I think, I think that there are feature requests, but the thing is they're already in synchro. Like almost everything people ask for is already in synchro plus more than they could like imagine with Kabuto. So um, I think one of the beautiful things about Kabuto is that it's super simple. It's easy to use. It's helped a lot of break fix shops that were kind of scared to get into managed services. It's helped them dip their toes in the water there and just start doing something. And then they realize they're like, okay, I got this working. Like I'm selling it. And now I need more, right? I need scripting. I need, um, you know, more power, powerful Windows patch management, sure. like random things like that. And so they ask for them, but now there is somewhere for them to go. So we're actually one of the only companies that has something for like the whole spectrum of break fix all the way to like fully managed services. So we can help you take your business all the way through that. Um, and so I think that's where 
at the end of the day, it's better for people that we're doing it in synchro because it's combined with the PSA than if we spent all that time in Kabuto. And so, I think the people that have switched would attest to that. And, and I think that's fair. I, I definitely think that's fair. But I also think that there are people out there that are already kind of like this hybrid between having like a, a break fix, you know, store, shop, whatever. And then yep. they're also doing managed services. And on the managed services side, you know, they're already using an RMM. They're already, uh, you know, they've already fine tuned it, whether it's solar winds or uh, connect wise or whatever, right? It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. So when, when you say to them, well, okay, I get that you want Kabuto to do a little bit more than it does right now. So why don't you just switch over to, to Synchro and then you'll get all those extra features you're looking for. I, I think that might add some frustration for them because I think what they like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, does, does Synchro have that, um, that little you know, pop up in the corner where it'll say, hey, you know, you, we detected this issue. Like, that's what I remember about Kabuto. It'd be like, yeah. hey, um, hey, dummy, your hard drive's full or, you know, whatever. And and it would trigger to, to basically what I liked about it was it was triggering an event to generate revenue for the break fix shop. Yes. And that's the way I was looking at it. Yes. So, so um, you're right in that it's missing two things right now in Synchro which we are building, it's on the roadmap. Um, one is the Windows UX for submitting a request um, and like attaching a screenshot and stuff. Right now what it does in Synchro instead is it still has a system tray icon that you can custom brand, but it um, opens the support portal. So it opens your web browser okay. and they can submit a ticket there, which is fine. It's There's nothing wrong with it, but it's not as it's just not nice awesome. as the Windows form. So we are putting the Windows form in there. We're probably going to add some stuff to it. And I think that'll be really fun. Secondly, you're right. The pop-up that is, it's very residential focused, right? Like MSPs that are doing small and medium-sized business stuff, they're not going to want sure. that. But we want to add that functionality for people so that when they're moving from Kabuto to Synchro, um, if they decide that that's the right thing for their business, they won't miss anything. Right now, people do miss those two things. And I don't really like that. So I think we're going to add those two little things in there and then it'll be like, okay, now you have everything you had here over here, plus a lot more. Got it. Um, so, so if I'm understanding correctly, Kabuto and Synchro both use the exact same like underlying agent code. Um, Kabuto is, is kind of reached its peak. You're going to keep updating the, the agent when you have uh, bug fixes, thanks to all of these wonderful opportunities that Microsoft offers with Windows <laughs> updates and things like that. Sure. But otherwise, you're, you're not going to start adding additional antivirus partners or, or backup solutions or, or all of this other stuff to Kabuto. Your, your main focus now is keeping Kabuto stable and adding bells and whistles to Synchro. I would say in general, that's correct. Um, I don't want to say, say like never because right. you never know, like some good, really good opportunity to help people could come up. And like, I, I, I guess like my motto would be, it depends, but like in general, you're right. Like if I had to make an assumption about the future, that would be it. Yes. Okay. And, and I feel like I need to start asking this question with every webinar guest I have now, because uh, you just never know anymore. Are you also owned by Kaseya? Because, because no. apparently there's some secrets in the industry that people are just now. Are you finding. just asking everyone if they're owned by? I'm just going to ask everyone if if you, you should know, ask are everyone you, if they're owned by Toma Bravo. That's probably would yeah, be like, true. Um, well, well, look at IT glue. Like you know, two years later, we're just now yeah. finding out. So I'm yeah. just going to ask everyone. Are no, you I get surprised by that all the time. Uh, <laughs> I, I get the news at the same time you do. No, we're actually. I mean, I don't want to, I don't know for sure, but I think we're one of the only players right now that are completely privately owned. Like we're okay. not VC backed. We don't have a bunch of people that are like trying to get us to sell the company tomorrow or to double <laughs> our prices. Like we own the company and we are happy and having fun doing it. Um, our employees are super happy. We like the environment we have that we're working in and we like working with our customers. 
And I think that's why you see us, for example, shipping features like multiple times a week instead of once a quarter, um, because we like building things. We're, we're like a very dev and support heavy team as opposed to a sales heavy team. So we're really like, it's all about talking to our customers and uh, building things for them that it's going to help them be more profitable and grow their businesses and be more efficient. Um, and we don't, we don't have like a perverse incentive, if that makes sense, to like yeah. exploit uh, our users. Now, now I, man, there is a couple of topics I want to touch on there. So if I... I got to play devil's advocate here, man. So you're telling me if Tomo Bravo came up to you guys tomorrow and, and offered you a big fat check, mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't at least consider it. You enjoy I mean, it again, so much? again, like my motto as an entrepreneur is it depends. Like, look, I'm not going <laughs> to pretend like I wouldn't look at that because anybody <laughs> would. Right. But oh, absolutely. <laughs> I, can say, I can say like our goal is not to go and sell the company. That's not why we started doing this. That's not why we do it every day. That's not why okay. I walk into work. You know, I do it because I enjoy it. Um, you know, I won't speak for everybody on our team because everybody's motivated by different things. But for me personally, I love the like problem solving, like finding cool ways to help people and building cool things. Mm -hmm. um, I love learning. So I'm super motivated by that. And we've, you know, we're a bootstrapped company. So we've grown super steadily over time, um, you know, since 2011. And that's been a fun, like just learning the different stages of a company and um, building teams. And that, so that's one of the reasons I'm motivated. So for me, it's like, if I was not learning anything anymore, which like seems like a weird thing when you're running a business to like, I don't know if that's ever gonna happen. Um, then sure, I might be interested in that. But as it is right now, we're super happy and we're growing and um, it's been a lot of fun. and. We're certainly not, let me put it this way. We're certainly not contacting Toma Bravo to be like, hey, you want to buy us? That's not a thing sure. that's happening. Sure. So you're going to that other one, the one that owns Autotest that got it. <laughs> What's that one called? I don't know. There's, it's not like there's many in the industry. I, I feel like. I, I normally would remember. I, I, it's hard for me to keep a mental map of like who owns what, but it's, it's not many people that own lots of things. It's it's an upside down tree, man. There's only one there's only one root. It's up here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So you said that you are a dev and support based company that you guys, you know, you, you don't have a huge sales team. It doesn't really seem like you guys spend a boatload of money on marketing. You know, um, I, no. I don't I don't even think I see like, you know, when I'm surfing the web, you know, the ad roll and Facebook marketing and all that. Like, I don't think I see any synchro ads. Either. So we just participate in lots of communities. That's like okay. what we do. So lots of like Facebook groups where I just hang out. If people tag me, like I'm happy to help. But we are not a super pushy sales organization. Um, like you're not going to get a phone. When, if you go sign up for a trial you might get one phone call, like your whole trial. We're not going to like hound you. Um, we're there to help. It's like a consultative sales thing. If you have questions, we're going to answer them for you. If you want a product tour, we'll give it to you. But um, it's a little bit different. Like we are, um, we're like an inventor company almost. Like we Got like it. building things um, and we like you talking to our customers. You like building and you hate selling. I don't, it's not about hating selling. There's no, nothing wrong with selling stuff. It's you just You don't want to be the pushy car salesman guy though. Like, you well, know, we want to have a really good product that people want to mm -hmm. buy, right? If we have a good product, then all I need to do is I need to answer your questions, show you how to use it, and then you'll want it. Okay. Right? So instead, that's why we don't have contracts. We don't have setup fees, onboarding fees, uh, platform fees. There's nothing like that. You just go to the website, you sign up for a trial. You can try mm -hmm. the software out. If you need help with it, we'll give you help, but it's, you can just figure it out. And um, I think that's the model we like a little bit more um, because it, well, it feels better. It feels like we're okay. taking care of people. And I think that's more important to us um, in terms of the experience than it is like, making our conversion rate go up by 5%. Okay. So um, I, I want to, 
I want to ask you one more question right now, just about the, or two more questions right now about the company. And then I'm going to ask some technical questions. All right. So, um, with the, with the, going back to the support based thing, yep. so I've seen people complain about, I don't know if it's with synchro or with uh, repair shopper or whatever, but I've seen people complain about either support uh, not being responsive or support saying things like, uh, well, have you, have you checked our knowledge base? And then uh, next thing you know, we've, we've looked at the knowledge base and it literally doesn't have a solution for this specific issue. Um, so can you talk to us kind of about, you know, how, how are you guys not just another RMM? Like what is, what is your support doing differently? I think those are two different questions, which I'll be happy to answer. One is, how are you not just another RMM? So I'll do that second. Um, okay. The first one is about the support. So um, a couple things. Number one, uh, so we have a core value in our company where we want to make sure our employees all have work-life balance and like live good lives and are happy. Um, we think that That's if reasonable. we don't, make people work 80 hours a week they'll have more time to like have creative energy and we'll solve problems better and long term it'll be way better for everybody um because of that we have super happy employees the downside for our customers is that we don't offer 24 7 support um at some point we might uh for repair shopper we do actually have a team in cape town south africa um and um that has helped us because we have customers in europe and most English speaking countries and other countries as well. Um, that has helped us have off hours support. We actually don't tell anybody that they just answer tickets at the night in the nighttime. And, and that's nice because it's their daytime. So it fits with our like core values there. And um, they've been great. And those are people that are like on our team that I like hired personally. It's not some outsourced thing. Um, now for synchro i think we're going to explore that we're also going to i think with synchro the support is actually really good considering the fact that we don't do 24 7 support and we can we can say like i think that's reasonable because we're like a third of the price of anybody else if you have like an rmm and a psa and you migrate to us usually people save a ton of money and so yes like we don't offer 24 7 support but we respond super super fast and i think what i have heard is even though we don't offer 24 7 support the support is actually better than what you get with a lot of the other companies out there that okay. claim to so yeah every once in a while i've seen some like anomalies where somebody's email didn't for some reason get into our help our like ticketing system um we've had some like because we use Zendesk for our ticketing, there have been some weird things where, um, like somebody sent us an email, and we actually didn't get a ticket, and then they're like, "You didn't respond to my email." I'm like, "That doesn't happen. We always respond within 24 hours, if not like within an hour." Um, so that has happened a couple times, and um, we found the issue there and fixed that. But okay, uh, yeah, I mean, in general, I think if you go on our Facebook group, for example, and you ask about the support you'll find that we have lots of happy customers. Okay. Um, not just another RMM. Yes, thank you. Um, so I think the easiest way to explain that is that we're not just an RMM. Um, it's a combined PSA, remote access, RMM. It's got some documentation stuff in it. So it's got like, it's kind of like a business in a box for an MSP. When you're used to having your RMM over here, your PSA over here, your remote access over here and your documentation and stuff and integrating all of them. That's what you get with synchro all just in one platform. Um, I think the other thing is that it's intuitive and easy to use. Um, our pricing is transparent and just per user. So it's $99 per month per user, unlimited everything. Um, and we are community driven. Uh, so everything we build is based on community feedback and we ship stuff all the time. Our dev team is amazing. Um, and you, Go check out if you check out our blog, you'll see that we release stuff like almost every day, and it's a plentiful amount of meaningful stuff. So, um, all right, my my here's here's what's going to be the toughest business related question. Um, so, so there are some people that I, I think it's safe to say 
they they just feel as though Troy has like out to get them or or has rubbed them the wrong way in in some way or another. Can can you speak on like Troy's demeanor? Like I'll be honest, it, I feel like it's even happened to me where I I'll like I'll say something and then he'll he'll respond and then you know I get that little internal voice that that reads back what he's saying mm-hmm. and. And all I can think of after I'm done reading that is, and that guy's a jerk. Sure. Um, I can speak to that. So I think um, Troy and all of us, but definitely Troy, are very, <laughs> very invested in our customers. We, like, so I worked for an MSP, right? And I had a computer pair thing when I was in college and afterwards. And Troy had uh, three computer pair businesses and an MSP. So like we've done this, right? And other people on the team have like worked in cell phone repair shops and like other kinds of repair businesses, Um, worked at like Best Buy and things like that. So we like understand who we're talking to and we were those people and we care a lot. And I think that's why you see us shipping new things. Like we don't have to ship new stuff, but we want to because we want to take care of people. We want to help you be more profitable. Troy works super, super hard um, to try to come up with creative, fun ways to uh, help MSPs and computer repair businesses and all kinds of other repair businesses for Repair Shopper um, grow and sustain. And um, he's really passionate about that. And I think what happens sometimes is because he's really invested. Um, sometimes people will like post on the Facebook groups or something and like say something that isn't true, right? Like factually, like not true. Like you don't have this feature. Why haven't you built it? Or, like, why aren't you releasing anything? Um, and Troy's like, <laughs> we just released stuff yesterday. Um, and he, you know, he like maybe is emotionally invested there. And I think he's also like a pretty direct person. And so it can come across as a little like abrasive. But the thing is, it like I hang out with Troy all the time, right? Troy is super well-meaning. He's not trying to like be a jerk, as you said. Um, he really just wants to make sure people know that like, okay, these are the facts. Um, And then I think if you go read his responses, you can kind of read into it. Like he does really, really care what people think. And I think that's why he's reacting that way. And I don't mean like about him. I mean about like the company in general and about the product because he invests so much of his energy into it. And I think what happens is people see the end result, which is like awesome new features being shipped super cool ideas and that a lot of that is troy obviously we have an amazing dev team and everybody should get credit for that but troy is like the like creative juice there and so i think what you're seeing is like the other side of that coin there where he's just really invested and i think it's at the end of the day i think it's really really good for our customers that troy is so invested um And then also like you'll see me be more active on social media than him these days because I don't get as like emotionally affected by whatever's going on. And so I just have an easier time responding, you know? Cool. All right. So let's, uh, thank you, by the way. I I feel like, I I feel like you've answered all of my questions. Um, If anyone else has any questions like about the company, the history of Synchro, uh, why didn't you, do this thing that you wanted me to do, whatever, pop them into the Q and a, um, I, I am going to start going, I'm going to start going through the Q and a questions now. So, uh, John here wants to know what you have for remote support. And, um, I, I want to elaborate on that question myself. Um, so, so one of the things that I'm, I'm noticing is that, you know, you, you said earlier, PSA companies and RMM companies are, are just kind of one and the same these days almost, you know, so um, connect wise, they own screen connect. Mm-hmm. Right? And I don't, I don't even know what they call it anymore. Um, it's connect wise remote. Con- control. Control. You're right. Control. I, it's hard um, to keep track. It really is. It really is. They're going to, I don't even know. So, um, and then uh, let's see, uh, Solar Winds, they own that one. Gosh, what's, what do they call it? MSP Anywhere? Yeah. They, yeah, so they've got theirs. I, I think so. And then, like, you know, then there's the other side where 
companies like Datto RMM, they just integrate with um, one of the, I'll call it one of the big like three or four. It's not log me in, it's not screen connect, and it's and it's not um, team viewer. Splash top. Yes, that's so. That's kind of what they use built right into their to their system. Um, I know that that Synchro has integrations, and in fact, Synchro has integrations with Team Viewer, mm -hmm. and it also has integration with Screen Connect, Connectwise yep. Control, whatever you want to call it. Yep. So, what other ways do we have? to remotely access our computer systems that we're managing. We also have our own proprietary solution. It's called Synchro okay. Live and it's built right in. Um, I think over time, it because we built it, like just being honest, like super early, it was pretty bad. Um, Fair. Because we built it <laughs> and we built it with some really cool new technology um, that the other ones don't have and so uh, it took a while for us to figure it out because it's not the kind of thing you could just Google the solution for because it was new enough tech. Mm. So, um, but we've worked on it a lot. We release fixes for it all the time and improvements and um, new features and stuff. And it's pretty cool now. Um, I still think Screen Connect is probably like the best solution. It, it really right is. Now. It's, it's I mean, literally it's literally the really best. Good. But Synchro Live is pretty cool and it comes with your subscription. Um, one of the really cool things about Synchro Live is that it's built into your web browser. So okay. you as the technician don't have to download an agent on your side. As long as you have Chrome, Firefox, like a modern web browser, all the stuff is within your web browser. So that means What about that, Safari? Um, I'm not 100% sure, actually. Um, I okay. know I always use Chrome with it. Our tech support team would know for sure. I'm not 100% sure about Safari because I'm not a Mac user. Um, but I know that it works really well in Chrome and Firefox. And the nice thing about that is that you can access Synchro Live from any device, Mac, Windows, Linux, they all have Chrome, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, so there is an iPhone, in, Android. Um, it technically works on mobile, but it's not optimized for it yet. That is something that we're going to work on. Okay. Um, the uh, so in Synchro Live you can do lots of different things other than just remote into the computer. So you can mm -hmm. like do file transfer. You can see the task manager start and kill processes. You can see CPU and RAM usage and temperature stuff and system specs and network info. So there's all kinds of cool things in there. Um, you can use a remote command prompt in PowerShell. Um, all that stuff works on anything. Uh, the remote access part isn't optimized for mobile yet. So there's some weird things like where the mouse is, okay. and, but we'll get that improved and we already, yeah, that's already. And so, happen. so basically what I'm hearing is it works really well. If you want the best of the best, you should still consider using screen connect though. Yours is getting there. And if you absolutely have to have mobile support capabilities, you should really consider screen connect or team viewer as as your option now yeah. with the now with the screen connect integration how, how does that work like does does synchro actually know that if like this computer is this device and screen connect like they magically just talk it's pretty nifty it's like um you go set up the app card uh for the integration and basically what you put in is your I'm trying to remember the screen connect word it's like the screen connect uh, something ID. Um, there's like an instance ID, screen connect instance ID. And you can get that if you like open task manager, you go to the services tab and it'll show you your instance ID. So you give us that and you upload your screen connect installer. And then what we do is in the synchro agent, it magically now on all your devices, it'll go and see a screen connects installed. And if so, it's going to match up the ID and it knows which computer it is already. Okay. And um, if it's not, if it doesn't have a screen connect, it'll install it for you. Um, and then the magic thing that's really cool is all you have to do is go to that device in the Synchro Online dashboard. You click, I want to remote in with screen connect and it opens the screen connect um, agent on your end and just remotes in. So it's like a magic link basically. 
So okay. it's super easy, very plug and play. You just have to give it two things, the installer and that ID. So with, with that, um, if we're having trouble getting Screen Connect or any of your integrations working, can we just reach out to you and, and you'll help us? Yeah, so I mean, it depends what your account state is in. So if you're like on a trial, um, we have folks that can give you like a product tour, right? And they can like walk you through all that stuff and talk to you about the integrations and things like that. Mm -hmm. Once you like become an actual like paying customer, um, we do um, up to three free onboarding sessions. Okay. So, um, and we'll, we basically have like a spreadsheet that you can fill out and it's like, I want to learn about these things. And once you fill it out, then we'll do a session with you and we'll go over those things. Um, so yeah, we can totally can we, do that. There are, there are some can we do like cases a paid that are, onboarding? Like we've never had to do someone... paid onboarding, um, so, because usually it's been enough for people to just okay. do the free onboarding. Um, hopefully we never have to do paid onboarding. Um, and our onboarding is just really good. Okay. So, you know, that being said, uh, I'm, it may happen at some point, but we haven't had to charge anybody for onboarding yet. Um, and let's see, the only exception might be like, if you really want to have us help you set up the QuickBooks integration, QuickBooks is like a very specific or zero, like some of the more complicated, like accounting stuff or things that are really important, right? We have specialists on the team that know a lot about those particular integrations. Like I know in general what they do, but I'm nowhere near as knowledgeable about the Quick QuickBooks integration compared to some of the people on the team. Of course. So there's certain things like that where it might take a little bit longer to get you a session with them because it's like a particular couple of people that know about that, for example. Okay. Um I, I think you guys have, you've got integrations for almost everything. I mean, you can do credit card, ACH, uh, I see zero, QuickBooks. Yeah. Um, we talked about remote stuff. You got Warranty Master. Yep. So do, does Synchro not look up warranties at all? Like, have you, have you considered adding that feature to where we don't need Warranty Master? Um, yeah. And I think I could be wrong about this. I've seen in the Facebook group that some folks have written some scripts for pulling Dell warranty stuff mm -hmm. and they might be in the community scripting library. We have a thing called the community scripting library where we and our users can submit scripts and we approve them and then anyone can use them. There might be something in there for Dell. Don't hold me to that. I'm not hundred percent sure. I think we could at some point like build out a warranty thing, but warranty master works. We have a basic warranty system in there. It doesn't um, pull the warranty info, but if you want to manually put, I have this warranty for anything. It doesn't have to be a computer. You can attach warranties to things. It'll give you reminders when the warranty's coming up. So there's a basic warranty thing in there, but we don't have the automated pulling of that from machines yet. So okay. you can use warranty master for that. Um, Cool. And uh, somebody also mentioned here SMS messages. So I don't see an integration unless I'm miss. Oh, flow route. Is that how you're doing SMS? Yeah. So we have flow route and then, um, and you can buy like SMS. We give you free SMS credits up to, oof, I don't want to, it's like two or 300. I'm forgetting. Um, but you can essentially, we have a whole system for SMS so you can, text your customers if you want um, okay. like ticket updates instead of emailing them if you want to, or there's all kinds of cool stuff you could do with the SMS. Now let's say I've got, you know, I've got my business phone number. Am I able to set it up to where the SMS is coming from that? Cause that'd be pretty sweet. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Okay. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure about the from phone number. If I had to guess it would be no, but I don't want to. Like it'd be I don't want to give you false somehow, info. Right. I I'm going to assume it's a no, but it'd be really sweet if if there was a way to like have your number still live where it is for voice, but then mm -hmm. have the the texting part flow through something like Flow Route to where we can do everything from our one phone number for the business. 
So if you ask some uh, uh, VoIP people, they'll say there's no reason for you to do texting on a business number anyway. Yeah, so if you use Flow Route, you can port your phone or buy a new phone number to use for inbound and outbound SMS. So if you use Flow Route, you can do that. Now, if I port my number, does that mean I'm also porting voice calls over to them? I don't know. Um, I assume so, because they say they're a VoIP carrier. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I know you can get a new number with them. Okay, fair. Um now, one of the things that I think is appealing to people with Synchro versus some of these other companies out there yep. is it's like a flat rate. I'm, I'm not paying you for every single device. I'm yep. paying you for every single technician that's going to be in Synchro. Yeah. So now, it's am I also going to pay you? Am I going to pay you for office admins and bookkeepers and that kind of stuff too? Yeah, so it's it's anyone that you want to have access to okay. Synchro. Um, the thing that we find, though, is that if you go and do – I have like a spreadsheet, essentially, where people could put their numbers in and they could calculate mm -hmm. how much they're currently spending versus how much they would spend. And it's like people always save money. So, yes, you, you would pay for your accountant, but it, it doesn't matter because you're still going to pay less at the end of the day. And you have the opportunity to make more. So – the thing that's cool is that the model with Synchro, where you're paying per user, right? So you're paying, if you pay um, yearly, it's $99 a month per user. Um, if you pay monthly, it's $109 per month per user. And you got unlimited everything, right? The only exception mm -hmm. to that is antivirus. Um, and with antivirus, you have a choice between MCSoft and Bitdefender. Um, you don't have to use it at all. If you want to bring your own antivirus, you can do that. That's fine. Um, if you use MCSoft, it's a dollar per endpoint, and Bitdefender is depending on the number. So it's between a dollar 30 and a dollar, depending on how many endpoints you have. Um, so it's, that one's a sliding scale. Got it. Yeah. And I didn't want to do that, but Bitdefender did. Um, and <laughs> so uh, anyway, the cool thing about that model is that it rewards you for efficiency, right? So like if you go and you're like, I want my techs, I have two techs and they're each doing 150 endpoints, right? And so you have 300 endpoints. If you go to 400 endpoints, you don't pay us anything more. So you're right. being rewarded for being more efficient. And the other models, it doesn't work like that. Um, you, you're like going to pay incrementally for every endpoint. So I think that's one of the cool things about the model. And you're not paying per endpoint. So you can go put the agent on everyone's computer, even if they're not paying you. And you can like look at the upsell opportunities there and, and do the same thing with Kabuto, right? Like... Mm -hmm. That, that people are doing. So I think there's, there's really cool aspects to it. So what other add-ons do you have besides the technician price? And then you did talk about the AV. In terms of like extra things you can pay for or yeah, like integrations? Backups or anything else like that? Um, we have integrations with lots of stuff, but the only things that you would pay us for are... Um, the things that are in the pricing tiers, um, and then the um, antivirus. The rest of it is not a thing we charge you for. Okay, so you're not also able to sell us. You, we can't. We can't come to Synchro as like the one-stop shop. Um, not yet, and I think there are certain things that you'll probably never want to get through Synchro. I think people want like an all-in-one dashboard, and I think. We're getting really close to that, closer than a lot of people. Um, however, like there are certain things that maybe we will never be the best at, and it's okay if you want to bring that, right? Um, sure. So, but and, I think it and I'm not asking you to. I'm not asking you to develop a backup solution. I just wasn't sure if, you know, maybe it's in the roadmap somewhere that you know in Q4 you're going to start being able to sell uh, backblaze or crash plan or something. Sure. Like so we do actually have scripts in the community scripting library for monitoring crash plan, Veeam, Carbonite. Um, That's for monitoring. A couple yeah. other things for That's monitoring that. Sell it. Right. And then with Cloudberry, we have a billing integration where okay. you can automate your billing there. Um, so the, the, but you still get your licenses through Cloudberry. So you Got don't it. get them through us. Um, but once it's integrated, it's very easy and you can automate your billing for your clients. Um, with PAX 8, we have an 
it's probably one of my cool, my favorite integrations. It's super cool. The PAX 8 integration lets you get all kinds of cool things and automate the billing for that. Um, those guys are really awesome. So there's a PAX 8 integration there, and there are backup solutions in PAX 8. So if I look at um, the pricing for Synchro MSP and then the pricing for Repair Shopper, yeah. My understanding is the full featured PSA is the same thing as Repair Shopper, right? Um, mostly, or are they two different things? Mostly. It's mostly the same. However, there are some MSP specific things that are not in Repair Shopper. So gotcha. a lot of the integrations that are MSP specific are not in Repair Shopper. Um, the, uh, uh, there are some reports that are not in Repair Shopper. Um, things like automated remediation that are part of the RMM um, are not in Repair Shopper. And, well, the RMM isn't in Repair Shopper. So there's a lot of things that are related but to the, the RMM that aren't in there. But the PSA-only version of, of Synchro, if I look on your site and I see pay monthly, uh, I mean, it's it's not like it's a secret. It's right here on your site, $89 oh, yeah. a month. Yep. So that's actually $10 cheaper than Repair Shopper's Repair Shop version yeah but with the repair shop plan you get 10 users in repair shop oh okay yeah. so so you know people don't think about that kind of stuff yeah so, and frankly um, nobody's on that plan well there are some people on the psa only plan but most people come to bucks. synchro to get the combined thing right like th it's kind of if you're gonna come to synchro and you're gonna only use the psa like you're not really getting the true value out of it mm-hmm there's some just super cool things you can do because the PSA and the RMM are in the same place that you just don't get the value of if you're on that PSA plan. So, so let's talk about value for a second here. It, so PSA only 89 bucks for an extra $20 per technician. You are giving us the RMM and synchro live, which is your remote tool. Yeah. Um, the RMM is unlimited devices. So you, all we have to pay for are the number of people that are going to be using Synchro uh, day in, day out. Yep. Um, and then the Synchro Live is unlimited concurrent uh, concurrent sessions. So yep. if if I am crazy enough to connect to 37 computers all at once and the bandwidth supports such an atrocity, uh, I can do such a thing. You can. Okay. And that's all for an extra 20 bucks a user a month. I mean, that's... That's, that's why nobody's on that plan. Okay. So for the companies that are out there and they're using literally any other RMM tool and maybe they've only got 50 endpoints and let's say maybe they're spending 50 or or $100 a month for one, use, for one tech with their 50 endpoints, that still doesn't even give them a, a like ticketing system the psa right yep so all they have to do is spend an extra nine dollars a month and and now they're getting the full-blown and they're not and they're not and and that's assuming again they're spending like two dollars an endpoint for their 50 for their 50 endpoints so they spend an extra nine dollars and now they get the psa and they get to add more endpoints without spending more yeah and you know, we also have like basic documentation in here. There's like, uh, it's, it's kind of a no brainer. I, I don't know. Like, that's why I think we can have a smaller sales team, for example, because the product's really good. And all we have to do is show people how the product works, answer their questions, and then they will like it. All right. So let's talk about the advanced license. Because okay. this this is I'm not gonna lie this is a little confusing for me. So for an extra thirty bucks we get these mysterious advanced analytics powered by Domo. Mm -hmm. So Domo is like a, a BI platform, um, like Power BI or something like that. Um, it lets you build charts and metrics and things like that. Um, we basically plug your data into Domo. Domo normally costs like fifty thousand dollars a year or something. Um, we have a partnership with them. You can get it through us basically uh, as a part of that plan. We plug your data into it and then you get a bunch of really nice charts. Um, we already have built-in reports in Synchro. So you don't need the Domo integration. 
But if you want those extra metrics, you can totally get them like that just by upgrading your plan. Um, so that's the Domo thing. So, so what kind of reports do you have in Synchro that, that you see people most commonly using? And then what kind of reports have you seen people typically going to Domo for? Um, most people don't need the Domo integration. Um, most people use people that middle actually, plan. How many people do you think, if you had to guess, can you count on like two hands how many people have the Domo plan? <laughs> no, there are more people than two hands worth. But okay. um, I would, if I had to say like a percentage, I actually don't know it off the top of my head. I probably should. But like, I would guess like 90% of people are on the middle plan. Fair. That MSP plan. Um, okay. And we have a lot of reports. I mean, I can show you. We have a lot of reports that are just built in, not a part of Domo, which is why so many people can be on that middle plan. Um, if you want the extra stuff, then you can go on the Domo plan. Is uh, whether it's in Repair Shop or, or, I'm sorry, in Synchro or Domo, are, are we able to use one of those as like a live dashboard? Live dashboard. Um, yeah, we have like a dashboard page that you can use. There's also a live ticket dashboard um, where you can see like all the tickets. It's like color coded and you can customize it a little bit. People put it on TVs and stuff. Um, and you can see like tickets that are over SLA and things like that. So there are actually various pages that you can use as a live the, dashboard. The TV pages, I think, are interesting because, you know, there are, uh, you know, sometimes there's a repair shop that maybe they just want to be, uh, as transparent as possible and put something on the screen in their showroom area, or maybe yeah. it's just, you know, a, a, an MSP that wants to have a screen up on the wall, you know, wall of shame. Oh, Steve, you've, you've got three tickets over SLA. What are you doing there, buddy? Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so that's cool. Um, how, how do you feel you compare to a Terra or them to you? Because they they kind of have the same model, and let's be honest, they were here first, so that means they're so much further along than you, right? Mm. <laughs> um, I think we have a distinct advantage because we've actually been around longer than them. Um, Just a Synchro second. might be newer as a product than a Terra, but um, Repair Shopper has been around since like, I think two thousand. 12 commercially and it was used in troy's business before that even so the psa portion is super well developed and has been used by thousands of businesses for a long time um and so it's got a lot of bells and whistles and nice things in it the rmm portion came from kabuto which i think was there before atera and while it was lighter weight we had lots of time to experiment with things like on the window side that make it more stable and all kinds of things like that. And we had time to learn. Um, and then when we combine them, it's like, all right, now let's add all these things on top uh, and make it even better. So while I think maybe their product has been around longer, I think we have a lot more than they do, um, okay. particularly on the PSA side. And um, I don't think you're saying I don't think you're saying anything bad. You know, you're not bashing them, but I think it's fair to point out that, in your opinion, your your product is is just a little more capable. Yeah, now, and I think, I think I think a lot of us would agree because I've I mean people here know I've I've been on like every tool at least twice, right? So I've played with Synchro, I've played with uh, uh, Atera, and Atera like. Some of the things, man, were just backwards. Like some of, so, and, and that's just from how I would expect it to run as an MSP. Well, we were in that business, which is why it feels like when you use Synchro, things make sense because that's how we would want to use them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know the founders of Atera's backgrounds. I have no idea, but I have heard similar things from people that have switched from Atera to us. So. Okay. Um, similar to what you said is what I'm saying. Now, now let me ask um, on, on the complete other side of the spectrum, right? So you've heard by now of text together, right? Sure. Yeah. So, and they're, and they're fantastic guys. I don't know if you know the guys over there, but 
Um, I don't know them personally, although, well, okay. my memory is bad. I may have emailed with them at some point, but I don't remember. Um, and sure. I have a chronically bad memory, so. It's all good, man. So I think uh, I think they're doing a, a, a really interesting thing. Instead of trying to develop something themselves, they right. um, they've taken here's here's what we know works for our MSP, and and we'll sell it. Right, for, they're packaging Kaseya, company. right? They are. They're doing Kaseya and Bitdefender, and they're doing it at a really good price. Sure. How do you think you compare to them? Because if you think about it, like you know. Those those fifty endpoints for a hundred bucks. I mean, that's really not bad when you're like, oh man, I'm getting full blown Kaseya, um, and Bit Defender, full blown Bit Defender. How do you feel like you compare to the full blown Kaseya type of solution? I know it's not a piece, um, so you can't. You know that's not fair. I I you know I mean, I don't think about that very much, honestly. Um, we're mostly so. focused on what our customers are saying they want and okay. shipping that and making sure our customers are like actively using the product and really happy about using the product. Um, so frankly, I don't think about the competition very much, um, whether okay. it's text together or whoever. Um, we're mostly concerned with our customer base and doing the things that are going to make them happy. So uh, I think Kaseya is super powerful and there's lots of things you can do with it. Um, that being said, I think that our system is really intuitive and easy to use and people get onboarded really easily. And I think that's important because I think a lot of the other solutions out there, um, people like maybe haven't figured out how to use after six months. And at the end of the day, a lot of these solutions, whether it's like Kaseya or ConnectWise or us or whoever, a lot of them have the same core functionality, right? So it's actually not necessarily about the tool. It's about whether you implement the tool. And a lot of people flail and they go and switch different solutions all the time and they blame the tool. But the thing is like all of them monitor for issues, right? So like the RMM, like at its core, like they all have the same things and the PSA can build people like you can build for stuff. So I'm not saying there aren't differences, but if you don't you need to figure out how tool, to use your tools. Yes. And so I think one of the advantages we have is we have a modern, easy to use dashboard and it's easy to implement. And so people actually do it. That being said, I tell people all the time, if you're super happy using whatever you're using, great. That's okay. Like we, <laughs> like you can stay and do that if that's what's best for your business. Like we're not going to try to push that on you. That's awesome, man. All right. So I'm going to say uh, last call for questions. If anybody has uh, anything they want me to ask last minute, now is the time. Speak now or forever. Hold your peace. Um, Ian, I, I got to say, you've you've answered everything that I wanted to know. Um, I, I would feel I would feel comfortable uh, telling people to to check out Synchro and see if it's going to be right for them in their business based on the the sheer fact that you're able to sit here and uh, you answered all of our, all of our questions, you addressed all of our criticism. Um, I, I think you handled everything well, man. So uh, Miles here wants to know uh, if you have a Mac agent mm -hmm. and um, if you have remote uh, access for Mac, like I think he's asking, can we remotely connect to a Mac? I gotcha. So we do have a Mac agent in beta. Um, even if you're not a paying customer, like if you're on a trial, you can just ask our support team. Or if you are talking to like a salesperson, um, you can ask them for access to the Mac agent and they'll give it to you. Um, Mac agent does a lot of things, basic monitoring stuff and a lot of the same stuff. Um, we don't have remote access in it yet because we don't have MDM in it yet. And MDM, um, in order to, to in remotely install executables using an agent, you have to have MDM implemented. And so we haven't done that yet. And so we can't like remotely install TeamViewer for you, for example, um, without you doing it manually. Uh, so there isn't remote access yet, but the Mac agent is in beta and it's been in beta for a couple months now and um, people like it. There's some more stuff for us to build, uh, but it is there. 
Okay. John wants to know if TechSuite comes with Synchro. TechSuite does not come with Synchro, although I would like it to, but it does not currently. Um, so they're... But you want it separate. to, so let's make it happen, man. <laughs> they do integrate with each other. So you can integrate with Synchro in the same way that you can integrate with Repair Shopper. Um, so, yeah, but it doesn't come with it at the moment. Um, yeah. Okay. All righty, and last question. What's your favorite dinosaur? Uh, easy question. Uh, that's the easiest question of the night. Uh, my favorite dinosaur is a Deinonychus, which is like a Velociraptor, but bigger. Velociraptors are mm -hmm. like the size of turkeys. Um, like in Jurassic Park, they make them look real big, but they're actually like the size of turkeys. So Deinonychus is like six feet tall or something like that. That's so so Jurassic Park, those are probably actually Deinonychus. Yeah, they, they're Velociraptor. more like Deinonychuses. Deinonic, I don't know what the plural Dein is. Deinonychi. Deinonychi. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's probably my favorite dinosaur. Um, yeah. Well, very cool. Good question. Ian, thank you so much for, for being here today. Do you have a few minutes to stick around? Yeah, sure. Awesome. Uh, for those of you that were here, thank you so much. Um, you guys asked some great questions. If, uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me, Steve, at mspwebinars.com. I'm happy to uh, kind of field some of those for you. Um, I'm going to ask Ian to stick around. For those of you that want to uh, stick around, we'll have a, a nice little bonus chat. I like to call it the after party. Thanks, everybody. See you at the next webinar.